Good afternoon Tineshin everyone, good afternoon coach and good afternoon fellow classmates. My name is Emmanuel C. Espinosa from 2G Vitivated Electronics. So we are the study hub number 6 survival. So my topic this for today is all about the organization and management of learner-centered classrooms. So for the introduction, as a teachers, we are dedicated to become proficient, productive, responsible educators in an increasingly complex and challenging world. We do not just instruct, assess, and guide our students, but are challenged to serve as effective classroom managers to your students. The quality of learning directly reflects our management of the class. The teacher's actions pose a great impact inside the classroom. Classroom management make up the size of the teacher's task and there is no start cut to class management. It's either you will be successful or fail in dealing with your student. Oh, for letter A, the forms of learner-centered classroom organizations, procedures, and physical structure. So before I go further, what is the forms of forms of learner-centered classrooms, organization, procedures, and physical structures. Let me emphasize what is what is it. So, first is physical setup is one of the most important components in teaching. Uh, it reflects your teaching style and it also reflects you, how we, are, how we design our classroom as an impact on the way our students think clearly. Conducive learning environment promotes effective teaching and learning. So for number one is room structuring. Uh, room stru structuring uh, for individualized learning. Set up learning centers or stations for students to work area for this type of learning. Uh, for, for group learning, organize them around tables or clusters of desks. You can organize them in groups of for for co cooperative learning for frequent whole group discussions try a circle or u-shaped desk configuration where everyone has a front row seat so for the activity oriented classroom set up a large table for cooperative projects provide a space for wet or messy project so for number two classroom routines and procedures Establishing routines is not that difficult. For teachers who are strict and non-negotiating, establishing a routine sends a message to the students that they should cooperate in maintaining order in the classroom. So, according to Erlinda D. Serrano and Ana Ruby M. Paez, classroom events that can be routinized are the following. So here are the following. First is getting the attention of students to respond to a particular question, reaction, etc. Correcting the homeworks in class. Posting of visual aids on the board. Updating oneself of the lessons when absent in class. Going out of the room during break time. Clearing the table and desks after performance of tasks. Swapping of partners on discussions, forming participatory groups, and the last is reporting and sharing of responses. So that's all for my topic. It's all about. Thank you. So good day, Coach Sid Martinez, and to my fellow classmates. My name is Real Epoca Santos, a B-Deputed student major in electronics. So for today, I will go into tackle or to discuss about the benefits of routines. So the following are reasons why faithful observance of routines is highly beneficial. First, routines procedures help in freeing the minds of teachers to think about others' matters in teaching. If every time an activity is performed and a teacher has to consider some options on how to do it, it will be too taxing on his or her part to constantly think and decide. Second, Establishing routines on how to collect assignments or distributing materials enables the teachers to focus more in his or her 
lesson planning. Third, in the execution of lessons, a teacher who has routines for calling on student is relieving himself or herself of the burden of worrying about whom to call text, thus allowing more time to focus on what are being shared by the student. Fourth, it is easier for the students to predict their teacher's next move and are with such knowledge. They can concentrate and learn more. Six, reduces anxiety on the part of students who do not know how to get involved in a different class activities. Now, let's talk about the social environment. Fairness, respect, care, and encouraging learning. In every classroom, the most successful learning occurs when the teachers or facilitators are the activators of learning. Learning is more engaging when the classroom climate is welcoming to all learners. When the teacher's management plan is fair, consistent, and organized, the students understand what to expect and can make wise choices and take responsibility for their actions. Teachers should be a model of good communication and behavior for them to evaluate. The attitude of teachers must be one of support and fairness because this is the foundation of which effective classroom management and positive teacher-student relationship are formed. So, as teachers, we should promote gender and racial equality in all subjects, listen to each other's points of view, recognizing that there may be disagreement and do not use derogatory words to your students. Aside from being fair and showing respect, teachers can show they care about their students by knowing their student and the lives they lead, actively listening to them, and asking students for feedback would mean you value their opinions and experiences. This creates a culture where students feel safe to ask questions and take chances which will help them grow academically. So now, let's proceed to the next topic which is creating motivating learning environment. The foundation for any learning must be built on a safe, positive, and nurturing learning environment where there is open communication. Develop a learning environment where students feel motivated to learn within the boundaries and expectations on a safe classroom by modeling and encouraging a safe environment and purposeful rule. Students feel motivated to do the right thing and help one another. It is important for us as a teachers to put an emphasis in intrinsic motivation in a classroom to keep the students interested and invested in their own learning goals. Intrinsic motivation is self-driven type and it lasts for a long time and it must be developed among students. In addition, Intrinsic motivators help students understand the expectations of the classroom and aid in their intrinsic motivation. These kinds of motivators include praise, positive reinforcement, and rewards for exceptional behavior. So that will be all. Thank you and God bless. Hey, good day everyone. My name is Kaylin Guardario and today I am your facilitator about the five effective ways to get your student excited about learning so first way is the encourage students encourage students is the students look to take the teachers for approval and positive reinforcement and are more likely to en enthusiastic about learning if they feel their work is recognized and valued so the teachers should encourage to open communication about their student to praise the student sometimes recognize their contribution so that the students were feel respected and they were more eager to learn so second is get them involved get them involved to encourage 
students to be involved in the classroom is teaching them how to be uh, responsible. So this second effective ways so that the student feel them accomplishment and encourage them to be active in participation in class. Third is offer incentives. It is a setting expectation making reasonable demands encourage students to participate but sometimes there's a uh, student's uh, needs an extra push in the right direction. So giving them a reward is a sense of a accomplishment and encourage them to work hard with a goal in mind. So the fourth is get creative. To avoid monotony by changing around around the structure of your class. So teaching them through games and discussions, it gives more encouragement to them to debate and enrich the subject matter with visual aids such as colorful charts and etc. So the last effective ways is draw connections to real life. So it is showing your students that a subject matter is used every day by real people giving it new importance. So if, we, if the teacher showed them and the students see how it applies, they may be motivated to learn attentively. And now we proceed our second topic, which is the learner-centered classroom or the role and responsibilities. So this topic involves changes in the roles and responsibilities of learners and instructors in the delivery of instructional strategies in learning itself. This topic shows show us the roles and responsibilities of both the teacher and the learner. The, uh, so first we discuss the role and responsibilities of the teacher first is the first is to recognize and accommodate different learning modalities so this role and this role the teacher is discovering new styles or the different styles of modalities second is to provide instruction without being overly directive and third is lesson and respect each learner's point of view so it is important that the teacher should not be biased of their students they need to listen and respect of their point of view their beliefs that so fourth is encourage and facilitate learners share decision making so the teacher should give encouragement to them especially the times that their students not active in participation the last is the help learners work through a difficult is by asking open-ended questions to help arrive at conclusions or solutions that are satisfactory to them. And now, let's proceed the role and responsibilities of the learners. First is our active participants in their own learning. So the learners or the students role is to be active their learning second is make decisions about what and how they will learn so the 
the responsibility to think or discover new ways how to be learning more. Third is construct new knowledge and skills by building on current knowledge and skills. Fourth is understand its expectation and are encouraged to use self-assessment measures. If is monitor their own learning to develop strategies for learning. And six, work in collaboration with other learners, like ma groupings, being active participants in groupings like that. And the last is provide work and demonstrate authentic learning. And that's all. Thank you. Collaborative class norms. Have everyone reflect on what kind of classroom culture they want. Guide students toward identifying explicit behavioral expectations that will allow them to be engaged and productive. Press them to get specific. If someone say respect, list specific behaviors that convey respect or lack of respect. Two, discuss norms that might be unique to the virtual classroom environment. The virtual class classroom is not the same as other virtual or online activities. You may want to see to set standard for things like recording, dress code, camera, etiquettes, private chat, breakout rooms, virtual backgrounds, and more. 3. Determine option for responding when classroom norms feel violated or imperiled consider how you would respond the de apparently norm transgressions versus direct identi identity based attacks that require reporting to the office of institu institutional e equity and compliance clear Artic articulate what student can expect from you. For work to reach consensus in the first class, once you have generated ideas, reviews the list of behavioral norms and ask what missing. Allow time for additional input through email or a short survey. Agree on a system for adding item to the list. Once the class has reached a consensus, post the agreements on the syllabus before the next class meeting. 5. Revisit norms and refer to, to them. Option. Use these norms as a touchstone or reminder before discussing sensitive topics or in moment when things might have the potential go I to get off track logical consequences is fundamental concept in logic which describe the relationship between between statement that hold true when one statement logical follow from one or more statements a valid logical agreement is one in which the conclusion is entitled by the premises because the conclusion is the consequence of the premises, the philosophical analysis of logical consequences involves the questions in what sense does a conclusion follow from its premises and what does it mean for a, a conclusion to be a consequence of premises. All, all of philosophical logic it means to provide accounts of the nature of logical consequence and the nature of logical truth. Logical consequences is necessary and formal by way of example that explain with formal proof and models of inter interpretation a sentence is said to be a logical consequences of a set of sentence for a given language. It 
if and only if using only logic without regard to any person personal interpretation of the sentence the sentence must be true if if every sentence in the last set is true types of logical consequences number one time out or take a break when a child takes a break the separation means missing out the child is then motivated to repent in order to return to the benefits of family life during a time out a child serves a sentence for a crime committed number two you break it you fix it this time of logical consequences is used in situations when something has been broken or a mess has been made whether accidentally or intentionally number three loss of privilege this type of logical consequences is used when children's behavior does not meet pre-established expectations the consequence is is that the child loses the privilege of participating in activity or using materials for a for a brief time usually a class period or a day so good day everyone especially to coach dude and to my fellow classmate so the topic that that i'm going to discuss to you is all about the consistent application student specific and the time for resolution and calm space so before i'm going to discuss to you let me introduce to you what is the consistent application so consistent application a classroom without consistent practice can often be chaotic but creating an environment that welcomes uniform responses to behavior choices will support each student's understandings of ex expectation and changing rules and regulations ensures that students and families understand classroom norms and know what to expect when those norms are not meet, met. The consistent application goes hand in hand with logical consequences. Make sure that you are consistent with, with, your, with your rules, your consistency, and your reinforcement. Consist consistency is critical in creating space for effective learning effective learning environment students are able to participate in learning more effectively when they are when they have a clear understanding of classroom procedures and their importance teachers needs to be fair consistent the consequences needs to be issued to the students immediately and all students should be treated the same being consistent in your classroom as paramount to be to being successful as a teacher and obtain respects from your student so consistent application um, teachers should be consistent when it comes to a, to to their discipline and action so for example, uh, you have a uh, student na medyo makulit yung estudyante mo. So, dapat yung, yung consequences na ibibigay mo sa estudyante mo is fair. So, for example, yung estudyante mo is medyo makulit siya sa klase mo, sa loob ng klase mo. Tapos, yung, 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 yung magiging, so, yung, yung punishment na ibibigay mo sa estudyante mo is dapat consistent. In, dapat consistent ka sa kung ano yung magiging um, punishment mo or kung ano yung magiging regulation mo sa loob ng classroom so dapat you're going to to treat your students as pair hindi pwede yung um, kumbaga ngayon, ngayon mo lang siya gagawin tapos bukas hindi na mo siya gagawin so hindi yun matatawag na consistent application, dapat consistent ka sa kung ano yung magiging consequences ng na ibibigay mo sa estudyante mo kung ano yung magiging magiging reinforcement na ibibigay mo din sa estudyante mo or kung ano yung magiging um, um, punishment na ibibigay mo sa estudyante mo so yung yun yung um, consistent application 
So, the next, the next topic that I'm going to discuss to you is the student-specific. Student-specific when responding to misbehavior. Take into account the social, emotional, and cognitive skills of the student as well as what was happening in the situation. The consequence for the students might be the same, but you may practice more with these students or help reflect on their behavior. So, so student um, specific teacher should consider if it is valid reason of of the student. Teacher should be specific when it comes to their disciplinary action. So, sa specific uh, student specific, so dapat yung dapat si teacher is maging uh, specific siya, maging specific siya sa kanyang estudyante. So, for example, um, meron kang estudyante, uh, na late siya sa klase mo. Then, then, tato, then you're, you're going to ask your student bakit siya na late. So, one-on-one -on -one, um, questioning this. Uh, so, tatanong mo yung estudyante mo kung bakit siya na late. So, yung naging sagot ng estudyante mo is ganito yung um, a teacher, uh, naglakat lang ako, hindi kaya hindi ako nakasakay ng um, ng jeep. So, as a teacher, you need to be um, um, specific sa kung anong rason niya kasi balit din naman. So, kung bakit siya na late is hindi siya nakasakay ng jeep or kasi naglakat lang siya, no. Yun yung mga instances na dapat i-consider ni teacher kung anong magiging um, ibigay mo na um um, punishment sa kanya if ever na hindi naman balit yung magiging reason niya so yun yung um, student specific so the third topic that I'm going to discuss to you is the time for resolution so what is time for resolution in your class develop routines, routines for resolving conflicts this is not a skills that comes naturally for uh, two students or adults so be prepared to guide and instruct First things to pro provide the, sa the space and time for this to occur. Some teachers build this into their morning meetings or closing meetings have a conflict resolution progress for disagreement between students. This process should focus on communicating clearly, finding agreeable solutions and make a plan to move forward. So, so time for resolution it is best applicable when students have trouble teachers should have to talk to his or her students one-on-one -on -one, talking to them for you to, to know what is the possible way that um, for you to get them okay so for time resolution for time for resolution so meron tayong mga estudyante na minsan nagsusuntukan sa sila sa loob ng classroom so as a teacher you need to talk to them um, so you need to talk to them for example yung sa isang grupo ah, tatanungin mo sila tapos sa isang grupo din is you're going able to ask to ask them uh, the same day so yun yung magiging way mo kung paano mo yun sila um, ipagpa ah, ah, ipaayos mo yun sila dalawa so both party so yun yun yung maging um, way mo kung paano mo sila um, ipagpapaayos ulit no uh, so yung yun yung uh, time for resolution so the fourth topic that I'm going to discuss to you is the calm spaces what is um, calm spaces what happen when a student is struggling to control their emotions or behavior do they have a place they can go in your room or or process they can go through lots of classrooms have have a take a break spot this this can just reinforce behaviors implementing a behavior a process for take a break spot and teaching it are more essentials that what our space looks like um, students could help complete the the process that the process at their desk and this may work better than other students it includes a simple process that students use that focuses on self regulations and coping skills so for the uh, um, scum spaces 
in your classroom or in your schools uh, wherein the students um, um example um in your classroom and or in your schools um dapat meron talaga kayong um na isang ang uh, isang space na kung saan yung estudyante were going to release their anger anger so for example no um there are students some um, very impulsive you need to put his or her on a certain place um for the students can come so yun yung sinabi ko kanina na dapat sa loob ng classroom is meron kang isang lugar na kung saan mo ilalagay yung estudyante ilalagay yung estudyante mo yung katulad sa is example yung meron kang estudyante na impulsive yung biglang nanonotop lang so dapat i i remove mo, mo muna siya sa kung saan siya presence no your you need to transfer your students when uh, kung yung kung saan mo yung uh, na i-designate na spot kung saan kung saan niya pwedeng i-release yung kanyang anger so that's all for my uh, module 3 video so thank you for listening thank you